In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair the carburetor on this pressure washer with a Honda engine on it. This is a 4200 PSI pressure washer, and I think the engine is 12 or 13 horsepower, somewhere in that range. If your pressure washer's been sitting for a while and the fuel has all gelled up, then this probably is what your problem is. This is Rudy from Take a Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if you found it helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so this thing quit a few months ago. I don't know what happened, probably something contaminated in the gas, who knows. Uh, but I did go ahead and drain the fuel out of it so that the carburetor wouldn't get all gelled up. So it's probably gonna look pretty clean, but there's a piece of trash in there somewhere. I'm convinced of it. All right, but regardless, we're gonna take a look at it and see. We're gonna take the air cleaner off. Yep, pretty clean looking. All right, next we need to get these two bolts out right here to get this outer shell off of here. And these are 10 millimeter nuts. Just take these two out. And once you get the nuts off on the front, on top here you've got a 10 millimeter bolt head and a breather tube right here that just pulls right out, okay? So that's the rest of that. All right, next you just wanna set your controls so that they're facing this way and then this will come right out of there. Very simple. All right, next just take this outer gasket here and set it aside. Then you might have to wiggle the carburetor a little bit to break it loose from the gasket there. Uh, but let's take the idle screw and back it out all the way so that it'll make it a little easier to get this apart like so. Now take your linkage here and push it so, like so, and then you may have to bend it somewhat to get it into a line with that groove right there, like so. And then get this little spring off of here like that. All right, very simple. Now if you've got fuel in this thing, you'll want to pinch this off, all right? Use a pair of needle nose vice grips like that and pinch that. Don't pinch it too hard or you'll damage the uh, fuel line, but just pinch it hard enough so that the fuel doesn't run out of it. But I don't have any fuel in here, so it's not necessary for me to do that. So just squeeze the clamp and slide it back. Give it a little twist. They tend to bake themselves in place. There we go. And just pull the fuel line off. And that's it, the carburetor is free. All right, got the carburetor on the bench. I just wanted to make a quick note. A lot of times, if you're gonna store this thing for a long time, Honda actually gives you a little drain plug right here, right, that you can take out with a 10 millimeter or a Phillips screwdriver or whatever. But you know what happens? It still leaves a little bit of fuel here in the bottom of the bowl. So I don't really like that, it's, it's not ideal. I will usually loosen the bottom bolt and just leave it loose with a rag under it to catch any fuel that might be left over in the carburetor. And also, this little reservoir right here on this particular carburetor will hold fuel. Let's go ahead and take it off of there. It's got a fuel filter inside, and even if the bowl is empty, if you, I mean, depends on how long you're gonna store it for, this is gonna stay wet in here and rot this out. It looks pretty good now, but there's actually a little bit of fuel in there. I don't know if you can see in there. All right, so I'm guilty of my own advice. I didn't follow it. So here's the little fuel filter. Just go ahead and pull this out. It'll come out with the, uh, the O-ring, and we'll clean that. And you can see how that would hold fuel and rot that out if you're going to store this for a year or two, okay? Let's go ahead and take the bowl off. It's 10 millimeter as well. Careful not to lose that little orange gasket right here. 
And yeah, the bowl looks pretty good, actually. It looks really good. So we're just going to continue to take this apart. We'll pull the float out. Now down in here, there's a little emulsion tube. It takes a flathead screwdriver to get it out. And if you don't have one that'll fit down in there, sometimes you can take a grinder and grind the sides off of a screwdriver because a screwdriver kind of looks like a wedge a lot of times. It's wider as it goes up. But if you grind that down, then it'll go down in there. We want this jet and this emulsion tube out of there. There we go, fell right out. One other thing, there's also a little needle valve right here. I don't think I would worry about taking this off. It comes out right in here, right there. And I wouldn't, I would just leave that alone. I don't think that's causing any trouble. That's not the source of my problem. Here's a little close up of the emulsion tube right here. If you can see, it's got a bunch of little holes in it, all right? Those holes are really susceptible to holding any kind of trash. So what I like to use is a piece of this thin wire. I'm using a torch head cleaner. You can use a guitar string or whatever will fit through there, but I will take the wire and go through every one of these holes. It's hard to hold because I got it zoomed in a lot. So go through every one of these holes in the emulsion tube, and then I'll take a can of brake clean and squirt it inside all these holes when I'm done and then I'll follow behind that with air and an air compressor and all that so just go through every one of these holes also this jet has a hole through the middle of it right here you're going to want to do the same thing with a thin piece of wire and then I'll follow behind that with some brake clean or carburetor cleaner and then air is uh, to you know to finalize it out all right, I just wanted to mention a couple of little things on this carburetor itself. If you notice right here by the butterfly, there's several little holes right there clustered together. You'll want to make sure, and if your carburetor cleaner has a little straw, to spray right inside of those holes and go behind that with air in case there's anything trapped right in those little holes. Also, there's several little holes around the carburetor in various places. You'll want to spray some carburetor cleaner through all those holes as well. Down here, we have a little hole here where the fuel comes in. Make sure and clean that and make sure and clean any other hose. One other thing I did want to show you was, as I forgot to mention earlier, is the emulsion tube. It sticks through on this smaller end right here. You have a larger end here and then a smaller end, okay? That smaller end, when it's sticking through, will stick through in the middle. Now, if you notice, when I took mine out, it just fell out. But if yours doesn't fall out, you'll see a little brass thing sticking up here in the middle, and you can take a screwdriver or something like that and push that down to kind of encourage it to go. Okay, I got everything cleaned up. A couple of things I wanted to mention now. This carburetor is pretty clean, okay, but if yours has been sitting and it's, the fuel has been all gelled up inside of there, this is going to turn all nasty and orange looking. Your float's going to be orange, and it may even have like a crusty, you know, film on it. But uh, what you can do is take a Dremel tool with a wire wheel attachment and go over this stuff kind of lightly and clean all that off of there, right? Go in through here and clean the best you can with the wire wheel and then of course go behind it with uh, carburetor cleaner and air. Uh, but just wanted to mention that. Also this uh, needle right here has a rubber tip. Now if you've got fuel in the oil or uh, anything like that, you're not going to have fuel in the air filter like a lawnmower would have because the air filter is above the carburetor. But if you notice fuel in the oil or your fuel level is going down in your gas tank or anything like that for no reason, then this may be leaking fuel into the engine. Now this needs to be replaced. This is your needle. The seat is plastic, uh, so you don't really have to replace that. But right here, this rubber can go bad over time. One last thing I wanted to mention is, is if your gas has been sitting in your gas tank and you suspect some kind of contamination like I did here, you may want to take the gas tank off and get rid of the gas and then flush the gas tank out with a water hose. I do it all the time. 
Just let it sit out in the sun long enough so that it's perfectly dry before you put it back. Otherwise, you're going to recontaminate your just newly clean carburetor, and you really don't want to do that, okay? So we're just going to put this back together in exactly the same way we took it apart. There we go. All right, let's see if it's going to run. Runs like a champ. All right, thanks for watching.